Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast, guys. Today we have Mr. Robert Allen, someone that has impacted millions of lives around the world with his books, his seminars, and his wisdom. He's, he has definitely impacted me in a personal level uh, multiple times. And lately, um, we've been having a closer relationship and I have learned so much from this man that I don't know if the universe will ever allow me to repay him <laughs> everything that, that he's taught me in just a, a few times that we've met, you know, Bob. And um, I am honored to introduce you today to our podcast. By the way, you will be on the cover of our first Real Estate Entrepreneurs oh, Magazine wow. that we're launching June in our event. And we I'll be at that event with you in June. I'm excited to be there. I'm looking forward to shaking hands of all your, all your attendees. Yeah, Ricardo, congratulations. Looking forward to it. The regular person that's watching this video or maybe listening to this podcast, when they see people like you or like myself or other um, successful people that are out there uh, impacting the world, doing business. They see the good or the, they, they see yeah. the end result, right, right. but they never see the journey, right? And so they think that when somebody becomes successful, that it was always pretty. And that tends not to be the case. Yeah. It's very ugly. <laughs> well, in my case, yes, it was very ugly. In your case, it was very ugly. I think a few people make it through unscathed without a lot of challenges, but life, just life happens and you have to kind of pivot when it does. Um, but look, I was watching you guys on, on the panel today, right? And you all had massive setbacks, massive. Yeah, they yeah, weren't little. Yeah, they were. They were not little. I was trying to tab actually yeah. how much money was lost in that panel throughout the different cycles yeah, and, yeah. and you know and and yet you're still successful today impacting people helping other people like myself you yeah, know yeah. I, when i see you or ron or any of these other guys i don't feel alone anymore i felt yeah. alone uh, like you probably felt i yeah I, I did you know when you fail you feel like you're the dumbest man in, in, on the planet, you know, because you've succeeded and then you stumble and you fail and you feel alone. And that's exactly what Ricardo was saying. You feel alone. And that's why I didn't dare share for many years my, my bankruptcy, had a bankruptcy, lost everything. It was all kind of instigated by an avalanche, <laughs> a real snow avalanche that destroyed our magnificent mountain home. And there was a whole series of uh, unfortunate disasters that happened as a result of that that forced me to lose everything and declare bankruptcy. But, and I wouldn't tell anybody about it. I, I didn't want them to know because I'm this famous, you know, Robert Allen guy. Let's take it back. Yeah. Where are you originally from? I'm from Canada. Originally. From Canada. I'm an immigrant. No wonder why I like you so much. <laughs> Man, I love Canadians. Yeah, they're great. I, oh my goodness. Yeah. They are some of the most <laughs> yeah. Uh, happy people in the freaking yeah. entire planet. <laughs> I can party with Canadians like you have no idea. You can look at a lot of people who are really successful and you can chase it all the way back. They are from Canada. Brian Tracy, he's from yes. Canada. A lot of others. What part of Canada? Uh, Alberta, Southern Alberta. Okay, so you, yeah. you were on the west, on the west coast. I was. Oil field, oil, that's oil that's, field areas. All right, that's exactly where I was from. And so you were born and raised there or? Born and raised till I was 19. I went on a Christian mission for spent a couple of years donating my life, my time to Missionary Christ work. and went to Tahiti and had to learn Tahitian and French. And wow. then I came back, got my MBA. Were you door knocking then? Oh yeah, absolutely. Of course, you know, in Tahiti, they don't have doors. You know, they just have, you just, they, you just, they have you little, just cloths, the curtain. little yeah. cloth curtains. You know, you can't knock on yeah. the door. Well, uh, yeah, that was that was me riding a bicycle, you know, wow. white shirt, tie, flip flops. You know. Wow. Yeah, it was great. It was a, a it, and what what it taught me was, you know, not everybody wants religion. They don't they don't think they need yes. it. They don't want it. So when you try to 
share it with them, you know, you're going to have a 90% rejection rate. Wow. And they all, they all have their own religions. So if you are not their religion, then they're going to go, no, I don't want to talk. So it's, it's 90%, uh, 95% really. So after 95 people out of 100 tell you, I'm not going to listen to your message, after a while you get this thick skin, you go, well, is the message important enough that I'm willing to be rejected 95 times out of 100 right. to find the one who is looking and searching, and that's all marketing. That's all marketers do. Marketers, you guys are marketers, you're gonna be looking for the, the one highly motivated seller you're gonna buy with real estate, or you're gonna look for that one investor who's gonna be your partner, and you're gonna have 95% failure. So in, from, from my missionary experience, I got that out of my way. I'm not, I'm not that worried about what people think of me any longer, but right. uh, that, was, that's, that was, uh, got me started. Yep. Then I came back, got an MBA in the middle of a t terrible recession. Nobody was hiring. I thought I was going to work as a corporate person for the rest of my life like my dad. And uh, nobody's hiring. So I thought, well, I really don't want a job. I think I just want to make a million. How do I do that? Real estate. I don't have any money. I have $1,500 my dad had given me. I think I'll just use that money and buy my first property. I bought my per first property, fixed it up a little, flipped it immediately, made turned my thousand net into 6,000. And I thought, man, if I can make 500% on my money in a week, this is probably a good place to play. You know? wow. Then I started buying more and more and more, became a millionaire in uh, three, four years. Then I started, then I wrote my book. Actually, I started teaching my seminars first, how to buy real estate with little or no money down. And then the book came out of that and uh, Back to the failure. We didn't. We didn't finish that part. Um, you you may feel like you're alone. And what Ricardo shared with you is really very profound knowledge. To you, you see, we look at these guys and gals on the top, and we we they're on this pedestal, and we look at them and we go, how could I get there? Or they go, I'll never be like that person. Or they seem to be so smart. I mean, why? And and so you you make the decision that. You can't do that. Well, if you peel off all the the shiny, <laughs> the you know the the, the shiny uh, fame, if you will, and you look at the story, you how did we get there? You'll go, oh, well, he's just an ordinary guy. It's just only one thing that was not ordinary, <clears throat> rather extraordinary, and that means you cannot keep me down. I'm going to lose everything and then some, but I'm going to come back. I am going to come. You cannot keep me down. And this is the, the tech, the, this is the, the characteristic of really successful people because behind every one of them, massive failure, massive. But you can't keep us down. I didn't know that two years ago or three years ago. I first learned that. Um, when I attended an event like the one we are today, yeah, uh, in a different location, a different event, um, and it was actually with one of the guys that was on the panel with you uh, today, when he literally sat right in front of the audience, and he opened up about his losses and 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 how much he had impacted him back then, and and that was the first time that I didn't feel alone. Yeah. Uh huh. And. I, I started looking at things different. I was like, man, he lost a lot more than I did. Like, by far, like, yeah. it was a lot more. And I, then I reached out to him, huh? and he said, yeah, you just have to keep on going. But then I met you. <laughs> by, because the universe put me right next to you on that table at lunch. Yeah, at, at the last, a year ago. A year last ago. year in April, yep. A year ago. Um, and of course, I knew of you, and I have written your, uh, you know, read your books before, and 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 here I am sitting right next to you, and 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 you're telling me your story on how an avalanche wiped out your house and and and, and everything else you had, and then the, the the seminar business going under, yeah, and all of these ups and downs you had through your life, yeah, and here I am. You're the second person that I meet that opens up 
that way. And I'm just soaking the information, right? And then I tell you my story. You didn't tell me your whole story the first time. I did not. I, you, you've told it more but, of it recently. Yes. Which was stunning to me. Well, that day was a few of us, right? Yeah. So yeah. we were just having a conversation on ups and downs and on getting to know each other. And it's like I almost got deported in uh, Canada once. <laughs> and because they, they asked me, have you, ever, have you ever been convicted of anything? And I said, no. But then they, they put me in this little room and they're like, you're lying. And I'm like, I'm not convicted of anything. What are you talking about? You spent the night in jail. And I was like, yeah, that I did. But that's not being convicted. That's not being convicted. <laughs> so anyhow, oh uh, my gosh. Uh, I told them, they got to the point where I said, I told them, like, you need to send me back to the U.S. Because this makes no sense. But anyhow, getting to know each other is not like I go with my passport around the world saying, yeah, I spent the night in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah right? Yeah, yeah. So when you're getting to know each other, uh, or other people, new people that you meet, you're just, you just don't throw your whole life in front of them because they're, they're like, ooh, they get scared, right? But you did. And, and I fell in love with that. I was like, oh, my God, this, this guy who's famous and he's affected so many people in a positive way has no challenges on literally laying it out as it is. But you did for a while. I did. I, right? had a, I, I, was, I felt ashamed. Uh, and, and I do remember the day when I came out, you know, and this, and it was at a seminar and uh, I just lost everything and uh, it was not fun. And I was still teaching seminars and at that seminar at that time was uh, a thousand bucks. And my, a guy came, well, the, the seminar company that, that we were involved with literally failed in the middle of a uh, economic upside down and uh, one of the employees tracked me down in California where I'd gone to you know kind of get over my bankruptcy he tracked me down in my in California and he said Bob let's do this again and I said to him his name was Tom Tom Painter I said Tom I didn't like what I was portraying because we'd do infomercials and we'd rent a jet and we'd rent a Rolls Royce and we'd rent a house in Malibu on the beach and I would talk about how, how wonderful it is to be rich and to look rich and to be rich and that is not me. That's not me. I, I live in a very nice house and I drive a Kia right now. Okay. I don't really care about having a fancy car. Um, you know, if, if I, so I couldn't pr portray that in an infomercial and I felt like I was lying. It's almost as if kind of Seems happy, that, happy that, I, that it was over. And then he says, let's do it again. I says, if they were going to do it again, I'm going to tell the truth. And I'm going to tell them it's hard. And there are going to be ups and downs. And I'm not going to look like this guy. And I've got to include God. I'm going to talk about God in my seminars because that's true for me. It may not be true for my other audiences, but I don't even care. I'm going to talk about higher power. I won't use the word God. I'll say higher power. How many believe in a higher power? Right. And I'll ask the audience, 95% of them will say they believe in a higher power. And I say, good. God is, knows where all the gold is. Does he know where all the real estate deals are right now? Then why wouldn't you involve him somehow in this process? And nobody was talking like that before because, because you know, maybe they didn't dare and I said if I'm gonna do seminars again I'm gonna do it my way and if if it succeeds fine if it doesn't succeed, because I didn't believe they would buy it and so I said this is the only way I will start this again and we started again and those 93 people were sitting in the room they paid a thousand bucks and I'm now doing it my way and I finally realized you know what I'm a, I'm a fraud these people think I'm rich but I'm not. I'm, I owe $3 million. I'll never get out of this debt, frankly. And so I really, I opened up to the audience, assuming they would all go back and ask for their money back. This was a $93,000 decision to me when I'm bankrupt. And I'm assuming they will hate me. That I'm not, you know, we, fear is bigger than it really uh, in reality. And I just built this up to 
And I just finally, I said, stop, stop. I got I to gotta tell, tell you the truth. And I said, I owe more money than this entire room combined. No one more, owes more money and is in more debt. Not, not good debt, but bad debt. Bad debt, yeah. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever get out. And the only thing, way I'm going to get out is I'm going to have to teach you. I'm going to have to do what I'm teaching you to get myself out of this hole. And I really thought they would ask for their money back. I, I, but it, I was still there and I'm saying to myself, I don't care if they ask for money back because I'm going to tell the truth, right? And they, it was just the exact opposite. And I was stunned. And they came up to me and they said, Robert, thank you for just telling the truth. And that what happened to you, you felt, I'm not alone. You know, I'm not alone. Yeah, I was alone for a long time. Somebody that, that I respected. I didn't know this about you. And, the, and they were, thank you, Robert. And they were not only willing to leave, but they were saying, I'm with you, man. I'm in this way, all the way with you. And I, that was the first time in my life I had ever really exposed, you know, what I didn't want people to see about me. And the truth is, everybody is ugly when you pull off the facade. Everybody is. So just, and, and I was really worried about what would pe people think of me. And it was um, a fear that I had for many years. And that day, I got rid of it. What Larry Pino said on the stage today, he says, survivors are dangerous because they know that they've survived. You know what's funny? After you guys uh, finished the presentation, I had to go take a leak. So I bumped, <laughs> it, I, had, I bumped into Larry in the bathroom. And I asked Larry, I said, Larry, let me ask you a question. Out of the $90,000 you had, when that was your last 90 grand yeah. on in 2000, I forgot the, the, the date, but 1995. In, yeah, in 1995, uh, you had 90 grand left, and, and, and then you had to reinvent the whole thing. And how much did, did actually you, like, what was the last amount of dollars that you had in your bank account after you put it into work, oh. into marketing? Yeah, yeah. He said, Ricardo, nothing. It was zero. I didn't have, oh. I didn't have one dollar. Yeah, he didn't tell us that. That's good. He put all the 90 grand. Like he went all in. Yeah. He said, yeah. I'm going all in. Yeah. In something that he had no idea whether it was gonna work or not. And I said, Wow, really? And he's like, Yeah, and I said, Well, Larry, something like that happened to me. <laughs> I used to make all this money. Yeah. And I got to the point to where I didn't have fifty dollars to my name. Yeah. And I was living in a house that I owned the note today, because I owner financed it out. Yeah. But I was living in a house that it's a million dollar home in Houston. It's a big house, 5,000 square feet. Yeah. And I, I was like, I, I didn't, I wasn't worthy of it. Yeah. Which, which yeah. is mind blowing. Yeah, worthiness. That's really a very big word. I'm sitting in my living room, Bob, and I'm looking at this house and I felt like I wasn't worthy of it. Mm. And I'm looking at all my art. I, I know you love art yeah, too, because yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen yeah, your, your yeah. art. And I got art all over. I mean, this I would build this house with a lot of walls yeah, so we can put a lot of uh, art. Uh -huh. And I'm looking at the art, and I know how much money I got in there hanging in the walls. And I, was, I felt like I wasn't worthy of it. Mm. And reclaiming that worthiness, yeah. man, that was tough. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you reclaim your worthiness? Because I know you felt at some point yeah. like you lost everything. Absolutely. Um, that was, that's why it took me 13 years to write my next book. Wow. Because it took a huge New York Times bestsellers. There was a big space until multiple streams came out in 2000, 13 years to my next book. How, how do you, how do you put yourself together throughout those 13 years? That's a very long time. You, you just, you get up every day in the morning, you do what you were born to do. You know, uh, you, I'm a teacher. And so I teach. Yes. And uh, even though I was, wasn't worthy to teach the lesson. You felt that you weren't I felt worthy. I wasn't worthy. I you were worthy, but you didn't feel yeah, that you were worthy. Exactly. Exactly. I was worthy. They thought I was worthy. I didn't. But it finally, um, when I really finally got it back, when I got it back was when I paid the IRS. You can't bankrupt yourself out of certain amounts of taxes. And I had $500,000 that I could not bankrupt. Well, wow. And when I wrote that $500,000 check, I was back to zero. Well, wow. 
paid it to the IRS. And remember, I'm sitting at my green table. I know exactly where I'm at. I'm writing that check out. And it was that when I was back to zero, I thought, it's been hard, but I did it. I came back. And I, that was part of my regaining my self-respect. Like, I dug myself out of this hole. I'm no longer afraid of holes. Because I figured out, if I can dig out, my, dig out of that hole, then there's not a hole I can't dig out of. And then life throws out some more holes at you. <laughs> that you weren't expecting, right? That's right. That's right. Whether it's COVID or whether it's 2008, uh, you know, there are all kinds of life throws you holes and you've got to dig yourself out of them. <laughs> but you, you come out, you feel better about yourself. Now, uh, I, I am worthy. I am worthy. I am. But people, people don't believe it because they think, you're so rich, how can you be unworthy when you're so rich and you're so famous and all that stuff. And well, that's just, don't be alone. Don't, be, don't feel alone. If you have a dream, people say, well, you haven't deserved, you haven't earned the right to say you're successful. Let me tell you how you earn the right. You have a dream. What do you want five years from now, specifically? Where do you want to live? Who do you want to be with? What does your life look like at that time? Create your vision clear five years from now so that you say, that one of these days, this is what I want. But you might say, well, but I'm not there yet, so I haven't earned a right to talk about it. Let me tell you when you've earned the right. You take one step towards that dream, you are successful. You've earned the right to say you're successful because most people won't take that one step. You take one step. And then something happens and knocks you down. You get up. You keep walking towards your dream. Step by step by step by step by step. And every step you take, you're just more successful. You don't wait until you've got it. Because when you get it, you won't feel successful. There's more. There's another mountain to climb. There's more, more wealth to create. There's more things to do. You're never going to feel as if you've arrived. But if you take one step, brother, sister, you've earned the right to say you're successful. And that's what Ricardo and I are trying to t teach you. Bob, I love you. Thank you so much for, for your friendship and your mentoring. Uh, I, I Trust this guy. He's incredible. I'm absolutely excited, so thrilled to be working on a book with Ricardo. Yes. It's gonna be a bestseller. You're gonna want it. It's not done yet. It'll be, but when it is, it will you're going to love it. It will be done. Guys, June 24th, 5, 25 and 26, Robert is coming to Houston, Texas. Yeah. He's going to spend with me three days at our event, attendgrowth.com. Tickets are for sale already. And I want to make it a point to personally introduce him to you when you come to the event and that you can have the pleasure uh, that I've had of meeting him, uh, you know, and, 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 and sharing uh, so many different uh, life experiences that he's taught me, um, you know, in person. So I hope to see you there. I hope that you can make it to say hi to Bob. Mm -hmm. And I just want to facilitate that to all my friends, our audience, and, you know, the people that would love to meet someone like Robert Allen. I personally never mm -hmm. thought in my life I'll be sitting right next to him and talking to him the way I did back then when I first met you at that restaurant. And even though you were around, you were still far away from, from my reach, you know? And, and, I wanna, and I wanna bridge that gap to you guys, okay? So June 24th, 25, 26, Houston, Texas, Norris Conference Center, attendgrowth.com. I hope to see you there, Bob. Thank Attend you so much. What? Attend growth. Attendgrow.com. Yeah, attend grow. Attend grow. Attend growth. Growth. Yeah. G R O T H. G R O T H. Yep. Attendgrowth.com. Yeah. Yeah. See you there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to hit share, like, and subscribe, guys. We'll see you on the next one.